Hello everyone, I'm coming to you with another episode of Kid Gloves Marketing Monday. A little bit later today, it's been a busy day at Kid Glove, um, but today we're going to talk about content marketing for purpose-driven business. Uh, my name is Lynn Weinman, and I am the founder, president, and chief strategist of Kid Glove, and I get to work with a number of businesses that put purpose forward in their marketing efforts. Um, content marketing, which we're going to talk about today, is an effective way for purpose-driven businesses to set themselves apart from others in the industry, and it's also a great way to demonstrate your purpose and to help those who appreciate your purpose find you. So if you have any questions today about content marketing, please drop those into the comments. But let's start very basic and then we'll progress, but let's start just with the definition of content marketing because it's been around for a while, yet not everyone is using it. So content marketing is the strategic marketing approach of creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and acquire clearly defined audiences. And usually this is with the objective of driving a profitable customer action. So I want to just review. I know you all know what the words valuable, relevant, and consistent mean, yet they're so important to this form of marketing that I want to talk a little bit more of, about all three of those. So when we talk about content marketing being valuable, it means that we are providing information that the user, the reader, can act upon. It means we're providing something that can improve their lives, which also is what makes it perfect for purpose-driven businesses, something that empowers the user to solve a problem, and it asks them for nothing in return. Yes, I know, a little bit weird for marketing, but we'll get into that later, right? But being valuable in content marketing means that we're being educational and not promotional. And then that second word that I mentioned, relevant, being relevant, in this case, I know you all know what relevant means, but in this case, it means we're addressing a user's specific question or concerns. We're creating this information, this content for a defined audience that it shows up at the right time via search query, so we're optimizing, and it, that it makes a real connection between your brand and that user. So once again, being relevant in content marketing means that it's about the client and not about your business. Once again, a little counterintuitive, but we'll get to that, all right? Finally, being consistent in this tri trifecta of relevant, valuable, and consistent. Being consistent means that the content is frequent in publication, it's recognizable with a regularly applied voice and tone, which can be an issue if you have multiple authors of your content, and that it's easy to find when your user needs it. So uh, it means you're publishing when the user needs it, not when you get around to it, because sometimes marketing can be a little bit about that. If your content is not valuable, relevant, and consistent, then it's just advertising. And to be honest with you, I love advertising, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking today about content marketing. So how do we make our content relevant and valuable? We at Kid Glove like to start with client personas. So oftentimes in marketing, particularly if you're doing a media buy or you're looking for a specific audience, we tend to rely on demographics. We look at you know, age, education level, income level. We look at geographic area, which all well and good. We need to narrow things down or we'll be spending a gazillion dollars, right? But personas actually narrow down your target audience even further and they help you understand and empathize with that audience by including additional information such as their background, a day in the life. What are their problems? What are their 
questions? Uh, what are their unarticulated problems kind of projecting out for them? What do we think they might need even if they don't know themselves? What are their search habits? What are their content preferences? Are they video people? Are they text people? Are they podcast people? And then what are some of the key words or phrases that they might be searching for? We like to give each audience persona even a picture and a name so that as your writers and designers are developing content, they have this person in mind. Because in reality, if you just look at the typical demographics of age, education, income, geography, you can have a lot of target personas that exist within a particular demo and their search habits are going to be very different. So a very wise person told me once that, that personas and content marketing is really more about having empathy for your audience versus using the data, which once again, you want to use the data, but, but layering the empathy in is going to help you better identify relevant and valuable content. See, two of those three words that we talked about um, in the beginning. So then, once, once you have identified your target personas, how do you deliver the content to them? Well, there's really two kinds of content. And if you Google this, Google the content marketing sandwich, you'll see that a lot of content marketing experts focus on the two pieces of bread that are in a sandwich, right? There's that top piece of bread and the bottom bread. A, a lot of times we talk about the top piece of bread being evergreen editorial. And so evergreen editorial is the kind of thing that you might publish on your website. It's blogs, it's articles, it's the kind of thing somebody might discover through search. So once again, as you think about that target persona and what are they looking for, what problems are they trying to solve, your evergreen editorial is going to help them find that information through search. It's going to help position you as a recognized source for high value information. It's kind of like you might become the Wikipedia or of a particular topic. You might build a content pillar within your website on a particular topic. Then that bottom piece of bread, the bottom piece of bread is your lead generation campaign. And as a marketer, that's a lot more what we're used to talking about, right? The evergreen editorial is the thing people are searching for. It's educational, the thing that will help bring them to your site then the lead gen campaigns, the lead gen strategies, these are going to be the things that help you grow an email list by opening a door to ongoing sales and marketing through email, through retargeting, it might come through ads, social, uh, might come through search, but this would be things like white papers, eBooks, original research reports, webinars, the kind of thing that has a high enough educational value that someone is willing to trade you their email address for that information. And then once you have that email address, you are not going to beat them over the head with sales messaging, right? You're going to establish a lead nurturing channel to help continue to provide them information um, and to, to help them get to know your company and your purpose and lead them down that path to the ultimate conversion. But once again, I like to say this is somewhat like a marriage. Um, those of you that know me and know my adorable husband, Neil, and if, if you know him, please let him know that I said that. Um, he did not ask me to marry him on the first date because that would be ridiculous and it would freak me out. In content marketing, we don't try to go for the ultimate conversion in the first piece of content or in the first lead nurturing strategy. 
we like to go through an entire process. And if you want to know more about that process, I'm happy to talk to you about it later. But I do want to share one more thing while we're together on this Marketing Monday. I want to talk a bit about a strategy called the content gold mine. Because one thing I hear from people who are just getting started in content marketing is that it's just an overwhelming amount of work to continually produce content and promote that content. So here is, here's the secret. I'm saving it for the end of this live video. Here's the secret. You want to employ a content gold mine strategy, right? Who doesn't want a gold mine? So the content gold mine strategy is all about creating that ultimate lead gen piece. So we talked about the bottom piece of the sandwich, the bottom bread, and that's where your lead gen piece is, your big piece. So once again, it could be an ebook, a research report. It could be a webinar. It could be a gated video. Uh, it could be a white paper. But it's primarily an educational piece that has a lot of great information in it. So once you create that ultimate piece, oftentimes you can take a look at that content and you can create multiple blog posts. You can create multiple infographics. You can create multiple webinars, multiple videos, multiple worksheets. Those are all that next level of content. And as you use the blogs, the infographics, the webinars, the videos, and the worksheets, as you use those on your website, in your social media, in your various channels, they're gonna drive people to that content gold mine where ultimately you are going to capture the lead that you will nurture. But even further, you can take each of that middle level, which we refer to as the gold bar level, and you can turn each of them into gold nuggets. So a gold nugget might be images uh, that you use for social posts to promote the content gold mine. It might be social posts that promote the blogs. It might be uh, charts uh, or infographics that promote the content. It might be video or images. It might be a shortened video post. It might be an in, uh, a video post or a post promoting worksheet downloads might be monthly email digests, might even be single subject emails, which honestly are performing very well right now, but single subject emails promoting that content gold mine. So if you do this properly and you sit down, you develop that content gold mine, and for those of you with standing desks, you can stand up too, that'll work just fine, but you create that content gold mine, then you create the gold bars, and then you create the gold nuggets. And what you'll find is if you sit down and do that all at once, you'll be much more efficient and you'll be producing six months to a year's worth of content all in one sitting. So there you go. There are a few hints um, and suggestions for purpose-driven businesses to use content marketing to set yourself apart. And here's some exciting news for you. Uh, Kid Glove has a content gold mine, and that is a webinar um, on buttoning up your content marketing strategy, where I'll go into some of these ideas and additional ideas in conjunction with my colleague, Jasmine Brown. Uh, but if you would like to participate in our webinar, we'll be launching that in August. And we would love to have you participate. If you check back to our website, under the Expertise tab, you will see a page called Purpose Driven Business. that has all kinds of resources for pur purpose driven businesses uh, that you can access. But uh, our webinar will be promoted there. Or feel free to drop a note in the comments if you would like us to send you the information as soon as that webinar is available. And while you're on our website, which is kidglove.com, and that is kidglove without an E, if you do go to that purpose-driven business page, you will find a lot of resources to help with marketing from case studies to uh, blog posts to uh, episodes of our Agency for Change podcast. 
that you might find very helpful as well. So once again, thank you so much for joining me for Marketing Monday, the afternoon edition. Uh, very happy to share this information with you and feel free to drop me a line if you have any questions. Thanks so much.